Hi, my name is Winslayer, and welcome to my guide to which Ancient Wonders and Age of Wonders 4 can be cleared without a fight. In order to make this video, I went through the in-game files to try and find a list of all the Ancient Wonders that can be cleared without a fight, like this one, Reaper's Hollow. And when I did that, I basically came up with this list. There are basically 12 locations that you can clear without a fight. We'll take a closer look at this in about two minutes. The Reaper's Hollow Ancient Wonder gives the Eternal Bed Chambers event, which I can clear by basically sacrificing a pop from one of my cities. And then I can use that to recruit a very powerful unit. When you compare this reward to the other Ancient Wonders that can be cleared without a fight, this is just clearly the best reward because you get a hero who, yes, starts off at level 1, but comes with a lot of really great gear. If I click here on this unit, we can see some examples of the gear you might get. You get basically a tier 3 staff and a bunch of tier 2 items that you can either keep on this unit or switch over to a different one. I once got the ability to revive on my staff and slip away boots on my hero, and that is just incredible value if you can get to that location at any point of the game. If you can get there in the first 10 turns of the game, you've given yourself a massive advantage. If you can get there 20 turns into the game, you've still got a pretty big advantage in that this hero is, is free and comes with a lot of really nice loot. I believe this hero also, yeah, it comes with the undead dead queen and whiteborn tag so you can use things like the necromancer to revive this unit there are also a lot of nice economic things that come from clearing out this location when you clear out the reaper's hollow you get a one-time stash of gold i think this can depend on a couple different factors like how far you are into a game i think you can get more gold if you're uh, further into a game you get that the hero and then after you've attached reaper's hollow to something like an outpost or a city you get the passive income you get the imperium knowledge and extra income from your crypt as well as the ability to rally in corrupted souls now that we've covered the rewards that you get for clearing out Reaper's Hollow, I want to go back to this spreadsheet with all the different Ancient Wonders that you can find in-game listed here on the left. I have the bronze ones at the top, followed by the silver ones, and then the tier 3 gold ones are down here at the bottom. I went through the game files to see if they said that you could clear them without a fight, because sometimes they don't list out all the options if, you're, if you've got a... Um, Chaos Affinity, you may be able to choose a Chaos option that wouldn't always appear, and I thought maybe you'd be able to clear some of these without a fight using Affinity. What I found here is basically there's only four archetypes of places that can be cleared. One requires gold, one requires food, and two of them require pops. Basically, there's the silver one, which we talked about, the Lost Tome Undead archetype, which has Reaper's Hollow, Eternal Bedchamber, uh, Lost Queen's Crypt, and they all give the same rewards. You can pick a level 1 hero with a bunch of stuff, the gold stash, and then you get the the passive income after that. Um, but there's also another one that sacrifices a pop, a bronze landmark or uh, ancient wonder called Pit of Vipers, or that's what it's called in the game files. If you see it on the map, it will either be called a Slither's Den, a Serpent's Cavern, or a Gorgon Slayer. And um, none of these, none of those require affinity. One other thing that's worth noting here is that I started to put some locations, some wonders that you cannot clear without a fight because they look very similar to some that you can't clear without a fight. For example, the Haunted Halls is a place that you cannot clear without a fight, but it has the same Lost Tome architecture, so it looks like the same location from really far away in like the Fog of War. But once you can see the name of the location, that allows you to make a more informed decision. You, it's um, better to send a hero towards a location like reaper's hollow and eternal bin chamber and lost queen's crypt all by themselves just so that they can set up an outpost and claim the location and, and get that hero benefit as early as possible but if it's a haunted hall then there's no point in sending a hero over that way all by themselves i also listed off things um that were very similar to the pit of vipers here they the Lair of Silk and the Cave of Carnage share the architecture enchanted cave, so these guys can look very similar to one another. But basically, the way you um, deal with that fact is that you just get scouts near the Ancient Wonders as soon as possible so you can see what they're actually called in-game. 
The next thing we're going to look at here is basically how Reaper's Hollow, Eternal Bedchamber, and Lost Queen's Crypt produce the same results, and how you can get the same results from Slither's Den, Serpent Cavern, and Gorgon Slayer. These will all provide you with the ability to choose a free, free tier 2 unit. You'll get a mana stash, and then you'll get this passive income on your city. And then, like, Ogre's Keep is similar to Shatter Skull's Keep and Demi Giant Ruins. And um, yeah, we'll also take a look at this and, and kind of discuss the similarities and differences between what you get uh, between these different locations. I just loaded up a different map, one that has a lot of different ancient wonders that we can look at together. This one, Eternal Bedchamber, you may recognize as identical to what we were seeing for the Reaper's Hollow. You get some Imperium, you get some Knowledge, and then you can get extra mana, Knowledge, and Souls for each hero in a Crypt, as well as you get the ability to Rally Corrupt Souls through Rally of the Lieges. When I go into the actual event, you may recognize this as pretty much identical. I think you can get different uh, battle modifiers and different enemies depending on what event you get, but given that you're always going to be able to click the um, ability to clear without a fight with the Wonders that I'm looking at today, the uh, differences aren't going to matter. You're just going to see similarities when you click this button. You'll see that, oh, look, I can get some gold and I get the ability to recruit a really good hero who's going to have some gear on them. But I could also say I want this item or I want some knowledge or I want some alignment. I think you basically have those four choices when you're dealing with the Eternal Bed Chambers location, the Reaper's Hollow, and the Lost Queen's Crypt. And if we wanted to, that one went into the recruitment pool here. Pool. Um, yeah, you can just see that basically tier three, tier two, tier three, tier three. So it's not always a tier two item. It looks like you can't get some tier three, but generally this works the same as the other one that we were looking at. It is worth noting here that you can have multiple eternal bed chambers appear on the same map. We have one down here and one up here that I claimed earlier, you can get multiple Reaper's Hollows or multiple Lost Queen Crypts, and that can allow you to get even more undead heroes than you may have been expecting. You may have thought the limitation was three because there's three unique locations, but no, I think really it depends on the map a lot. You can get more than three from the uh, clearing events without a fight. As we can see here with the Lost Queen's Crypt, it is once again identical to the other two silver landmarks that we've looked at and I can clear it without a fight. It just costs me a pop, and I'll be able to get either an item, some knowledge, or alignment, or the hero that we've previously seen in the other events, and I would, I would always take this hero. Now that we've covered the three silver landmarks, we're gonna talk about the castle ruins, castle and captives, with the bannerless keep, fortress of tears, and fortress of woe. As we look at the bannerless keep here, I think you'll notice something pretty different. And this is pretty standard. You're going to be able to get some Imperium knowledge, some fortification for quarries in your city, and you'll be able to rally ogres in your cities. But when we come in here, you'll see I actually have the ability to use affinity to make the fight easier. But I don't think either of these options are as good as just spending gold to avoid the fight, because that means you don't have to send a whole army towards this location in order to get the economic benefit out of it. All you need is just a nice stockpile of gold. And if you have that, you're going to get a bunch of production. 330 production is not nothing at all. I, I'm only making 66 of my capital because I didn't really develop it to be a, a building city um, but that's that's multiple turns of production most of the time i don't know if that's worth uh, 500 gold by itself but on top of that you get the ability to get a pop out of the city of course there's some negative alignment associated with that you could do these things but i don't i don't see myself doing this unless i'm trying to get to pure good alignment um, but yeah most of the time you're going to take the pop and uh, get the the benefit for owning the location because remember you get this Imperium and knowledge once you connect this to a city or outpost. All right, so looking at the Fortress of Tears, what we're going to see here is that this is once again identical to the other one that we looked at, the Bannerless Keep. We can clear this for gold. I think the gold is less because I basically use console commands to get here a little bit quicker. And when we do that, we'll see that we get the production and the pop from this event. So yeah, pretty much identical.
As we're about to see here, Fortress of Woe is identical to the Fortress of Tears and the Bannerless Keep. I can spend gold in order to clear this fight without a fight, and yeah, I'd say the best option here is still take a pop. The interesting thing about the next group we're going to look at is that it's also Castle Ruins. This is called Salt and Vinegar, or it has the tag Salt and Vinegar. We have the locations Ogre's Keep, Shatter Skull Keep, and Demi Giant Ruins, which basically will give you the same income, the same passive income, after you have cleared the location as the other Castle Ruins, the Castles and Captives, Bannerless Keep, Fortress of Tears, Fortress of Woe, but the event rewards will be different. I noticed that you can get a free Tier 2 unit. I thought it was just supports, but I did notice that it did generate a Tier 2 Primal Charger on one of the locations after I tested this a few times. So you can get a Tier 2 unit, maybe some production if you don't want the unit. I think gold was another option you could take, and there was a significant amount of gold there not 500 i think it's closer to 200 um but still worth considering if the tier 2 unit doesn't fit your army neatly and then you get the mana stash kind of like you got a production stash on the last one or the gold stash when we we're looking at the silver landmarks so as i just mentioned earlier shatter skull keep looks identical to the other three we just talked about but when we go in here to actually explore we have a slightly different thing we can use to clear this without a fight this will block growth which is kind of like sacrificing a pop it depends how quickly you're growing your pop in the city where the growth will be blocked if it takes six turns to grow a new pop they're basically identical if it only takes two or three turns you are kind of sacrificing like one or two pops in the future for the ability to get this down but that could still be worth it because you get some really nice stuff out of the event and from the passive income from just owning the location so um, like i mentioned earlier we could decide to get a little bit of production well that's actually not nothing not a little bit quite a bit of production a little bit of gold or a tier two uh, unit as well as the mana that just comes with this i i think the tier two unit is probably the best option but i could see production being um better in certain situations so ogre's keep is like with the shatter skull keep we can come in here and clear this for growth basically and then if we want to we got the same choices here uh, basically production gold or a unit all right and the last one from this category or this archetype is the demi giant ruins and yep as <laughs> as usual you can clear it without a fight and get some really nice stuff um, yeah, it does seem like I just got a bunch of supports when I generated this this time around, but um, you'll have to take my word for it. You can't get a different tier two unit here. But All right, going back to this spreadsheet, we can see that we basically covered three out of the four archetypes. We still have the Enchanted Cave Pit of Vipers to look at, and this one requires a pop in order to clear. And then what you get is actually very similar to what you get from the castle ruins salt and vinegar in that you can get a free tier two unit and um, some mana but the passive income is pretty unique you can you can get production here versus the others all provide knowledge either 20 or 25 knowledge you get imperium income that's pretty standard for these wonders you can get extra mana income and you can rally the serpents when you look at things like slither's den or the serpent's cavern or the gorgon slayer all right, so let's take a look at this in game. The Slither's Lair, like I talked about, can give you some mana. This is dependent on quarries. If you have quarries in your city, you can get a little bit of extra mana. I don't think this is quite as good as like the Silver One's benefit, but that makes sense. The Silver One's supposed to be a little bit better. If we come in here, we can sacrifice a pop, just like we, we were doing with those Silver uh, Ancient Wonders or Landmarks. We can sacrifice a pop to clear this without a fight, and then like I mentioned earlier, I could say I want a tier two unit, or I could say I'd like some Imperium or some knowledge. I don't see myself ever taking these two. I think it's you want the unit here from this event. As we can see here, the Serpent's Cavern is identical to the Slither's Den in that you can get mana for your quarries that are in a city domain. And then we get the same options in here. We can sacrifice a pop in order to clear this without a fight. And then if we wanted to, we could try and get a tier two unit or I guess one of these other options.
All right, as expected, the Gorgon Slayer is identical to the other two wonders that fit in the same archetype. If I click Explore here, we'll see the same options. We're going to be able to sacrifice a pop to clear this without a fight, and then I will be able to get like a tier two unit if I wanted. Um, and that's everything I had for you in this video. If you feel like I missed anything or got any aspect of this wrong, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you around. Have a good one.